Hey, what's up, guys? This is 3D Bonfire back with another amazing tutorial. And I think it's also time for me to talk about the new features in Cinema 4D 2026.1 and also in Redshift. So there are already some videos out by other YouTubers. I was just too busy with client work, but I think still I can share some very interesting knowledge with you guys, okay? So I know that there are already some lessons, especially by the Maxon Trainer team on the advanced cloner modes, but I think that I just want to give you a real breakdown of a scene and just go through it step by step so that you can really level up your skill set. So the full lesson on these cloner stuff, as usual, you will find on my Patreon. Just look at how amazing this is that you really get the distance between these cloners calculated for free with the new cloner tools. So I just really love this one. It will be super helpful for client work. And I mean, just look at this one. That's just so amazing. But anyway, come on, let's build something from scratch. So I will just close this one. And I think I will just take you through one example on one of the cloner features that I like the most it's called the spline beat distribution all right so i can already put this one into the scene here and now i will show you step by step on how to use this one and create something awesome okay just as i said the full lesson on this one where i just uh, take a little bit more time and uh, be a bit more precise will be on my patreon it will be around maybe an hour or something like that okay but come on here i will also give you a short breakdown so what we first want to do is to create a cloner and put a spline into it and maybe just create an interesting spline movement where we then can clone our little clone objects onto okay and then we are super happy because the new advanced mode the spline beat distribution will calculate the distances correctly from uh, different objects so this is just very helpful i'm creating some rings here and maybe uh, you know what i will just keep all of them aligned like this but then i will just for example put this one to 110 so that now i can create for example 10 rings oh come on let's not be that shy okay let's put this one to 20 for example and i think here let's just go brute force so i will just right click on this one connect objects and delete so that now hopefully we get a beautiful spline object like this one and i think now we could just add a little bit of physical behavior to this one so put a rope tag onto this one press ctrl d just go to the scene settings get rid of the gravity and we want to maybe just jump into the simulation tap here forces and we want to of course put the turbulence into the mix i think that 20 and 100 would be a good idea idea let me just see how this one is looking okay it's a little bit too brutal for me so let me just first put this one to 400 put the strength to 10 and this one to 200 press ctrl d go to simulation and put the damping maybe to 8 just to slow this one down we want to keep this one just a little bit more graceful a little bit more controlled and i think that you know what i'm just happy with this one the only thing that i want to increase is maybe the strength let me see this one last time and yes this one is fine i just also want to go to the filters get rid of the work plane and now let's get to the bread and butter of this tutorial I hope I use this phrase in the correct context. Okay, so anyway, so what we want to have is a couple of different objects with a different size, all right? Once again, we go with a cloner. We want to clone some spheres. We want to clone them in a linear pattern. We want to just push it like this one. And how about 20? Yeah, that's fine. I'm just thinking about the correct size. So I think that this one should be around 20. This one is fine. I will press F2 to see this one from the top view. And I will press C on the cloner to make this one editable. Now we have a couple of different spheres. And I will just do this quickly manually, okay? So I would just jump to the first sphere, press T. I also want to go to the object mode so I can just click on the next one and uh, scale this one down. And I want to more or less create something like a little sine wave. Uh, we can make this one even bigger. Let me just see this one. Okay, something like this. Then for the next one, come on, let's just do it like that. I think we can now scale these ones down. Let's just see something like this one. Okay, I think in about 15 seconds, I should manage to do this one. Maybe we want to go up one more time and then we want to go down again something like this one okay that seems fine for me so now you can take these clones and put them into the cloner that we already have here in the scene set this one to a spline beat distribution i don't even know what this one means but it doesn't hold me back from using it so now the last thing that you should do is to put the cloner into the spline beat distribution and you can see the magic nothing is happening here all right so what did i do wrong okay guys maybe it's a good idea to just click on this one you want to 
take this one as an alembic so that we just take a little bit of the calculation out of the complexity. So this one is already baked. So let me just see this once again. Yes, now we have this beautiful spline animation and I want to try this one more time. Come on. Okay, does it work now? All right, so that seems to work. Okay, so it looked like that the spline bead distribution maybe doesn't like a physical object in it. This is why it's a good idea to bake this one, I guess. And now you would already have all of this complexity here. And now you can still click on these clones, press T, scale them down. Okay, so this one seems to be a better scaling for this. And now you could search for beautiful shots all over the place with some depth of field. Of course, you don't have to use the rainbow mapping here, but you can put different materials onto it. So yeah, I mean, I think that this is just really amazing. If you know how to use it right, then your clients will be very happy about this new feature to just easily calculate the distance here. And if you want to learn more about MoGraph and uh, in general about Cinema 4D, LiquidGen, all of the good stuff, you just want to learn how to make money actually as a 3D artist with Cinema 4D and other tools, then my Patreon would be a good place for you. And uh, you can also sign in for free to get some of the free stuff. But other than that, I would say let's make a cut here. I will create more lessons about the new stuff. Some will be exclusive for my Patreon, but you will also find a lot of the good stuff here on YouTube. All right. So thank you so much for your time. Consider to subscribe to my YouTube or my Patreon. See you next time. Bye everyone.